Hi, and welcome to my talk uh, about why I think network engineers might like to learn Go. I've got an accompanying blog post that you can take a look at for a little more, bit more detail, including uh, the origin of the talk title. Uh, clearly, these are just my opinions, so feel free to reach out to me on Twitter uh, to either discuss further or to, to disagree with any of the points. Uh, so we've only got 10 minutes, so I'm not going to go into detail on this, except to say that my background with Cisco is mostly in collaboration. I've been using Go for a, a little while, and I'm just really here to try and convince all my colleagues to also learn uh, learn Go. Uh, so first off, just in case you, you've not come across it before, uh, I just want to mention what Go is. So Go is a programming language that was created by Google in 2007. Uh, and essentially, it's a modern programming language uh, that's just designed to make it easy to build uh, with the emphasis on simple, reliable, and efficient software. Uh, so I'm hoping to explain why I think you might like to learn uh, learn Go alongside your current programming language, uh, which is most likely going to be Python. Uh, so first up, obviously, if you're going to learn a new language, you want to make sure that it has some relevance to you. And so what we're talking about here really is a well-established online community of infrastructure engineers using Go to deploy and maintain uh, systems and infrastructure. Uh, and I think that community is definitely growing, especially if you look at uh, a DevNet Code Exchange and all of the new uh, repositories that are getting submitted. And then you can leverage that community uh, and contribute to it and, uh, and obviously save yourself time and others whilst uh, we all perform fairly common tasks. Now, clearly Python's the number one language for network engineers uh, in this space, and that takes the top spot uh, for most top top 10 languages to learn list. Um, and I'm not expecting that to change overnight, of course, but, uh, but Go is usually in those top 10 lists as well, uh, and is becoming more and more popular. And it's probably the most accessible compiled language in those lists as well. So I just wanted to start off with a couple of examples where I think we're seeing a transition to Go uh, and then maybe cover a couple of language features where I think um, it will also uh, also be interesting. So first up was um, was this uh, example here, which is around uh, Nornir. So that's a pure Python uh, automation framework. So it's something that you might use using uh, uh, Python directly rather than perhaps using a domain specific language to automate your, your infrastructure. Uh, and the same people that have created Nornir have created the exact same thing, but using Go. So you can see a migration there from, from Python to Go uh, by the exact same people that, uh, as I say, that uh, have created that and have invested their time in creating that Go version. Um, and the next up is when we start to talk about uh, infrastructure as code, we might use something like Ansible, for example. That's a hugely popular automation framework. And it allows you to modify your configuration over time. So you're not really 100% sure what the state of your environment is at any, any given time. And that's known as configuration drift. So you can imagine like a Linux server where you add packages and upgrades and patches. Uh, and it's pretty nerve wracking when you come to the point of perhaps rebooting that server. And that's known as a snowflake server. So we want to avoid that. Uh, and I think the same thing's happening in infrastructure as code. And we can add a little bit of continuous delivery to try and help with that. Um, but then we need something that's going to help us with those larger infrastructure projects with hybrid environments and a way to perhaps simplify the provisioning. So you may have seen Cisco working pretty closely with HashiCorp, uh, and you may have taken a look at the, the likes of Terraform. Uh, so why do I mention this? Well, um, Terraform has providers for connecting to Cisco infrastructure as well as your cloud infrastructure. And, they, and they're creating more and more of those providers to connect, connect to more and more uh, Cisco infrastructure. And both Terraform and those providers are actually uh, written in Go. And so if you're perhaps looking to use those providers, you want to maybe contribute to those providers, add a little bit of missing functionality potentially, uh, or at least just understand what's going on under the hood, then uh, it will definitely be worthwhile looking at Go and having a little bit of, uh, um, and, and perhaps learning Go just to give you that extra insight. Uh, so whilst we're talking about infrastructure as code and, uh, and some of the applications you might use alongside that, we've obviously got Docker and Kubernetes. So they're both written in Go. Uh, and then we've got Prometheus and Jaeger, which are for metrics and tracing. They're also written in, uh, in Go as well. And then we've got App Dynamics from Cisco, uh, and that allows us to instrument your Go code. Uh, and then we've got Terraform and Console and so on for our service mesh, et cetera. They're all written in Go, of course, as well. And then finally, we've got libraries and command line utilities in Go for the likes of WebEx, Cisco Meraki, and of course, all, uh, ACI and SD-WAN and the Terraform providers and so on that I, I mentioned before. So we could go into a lot more examples of where Go is being used and is popular, but uh, I just wanted to cover a few specific areas of the language itself just in the last half of the talk here. 
Um, so first up is simplicity. Um, and Go is a compiled language like C or Java rather than a dynamic or interpreted language like Python or JavaScript. And that typically puts people off because they think it's going to be difficult to learn or slow to work with, for example. But I just want to pick a couple of points out from this slide, which is that Go encourages simplicity and productivity over clutter and complexity. Uh, and that's borne out by the fact that there's only 25 keywords and a single loop type. So it's a really simple language to learn. And obviously, if you're coming from Python, then you're going to really feel at home and it's going to be very easy for you to pick up. And the second area from a simplicity perspective is that uh, Go is a garbage collected language in the same way that Java and C Sharp are. And that really means that you don't have to manage the memory yourself. That's sort of taken care of you. So. Uh, it makes it, again, a lot easier if you're learning this alongside Python, you don't have to worry about that memory management. So you're going to be, feel pretty comfortable uh, with the simplicity that, that provides. Um, but of course, if, if you read anything about garbage collection, you'll know that that comes at the expense of, of a certain amount of performance. Um, but actually, in our case, it's not necessarily something that's going to be a primary concern to us, because especially if we're coming from Python and we compare that to a compiled language like Go, we can see that the benchmarks compare those two and Go usually performs 10 to 100 times faster than Python. So the runtime is not, not normally a concern for us in that situation. Uh, and then second up on this slide is compile time. So you can see from the cartoon there, compile time is often something that people think is going to, uh, to take a long time. Um, but actually, from a, from a Go perspective, that's just not the case. Um, it's, uh, it's one of the sort of fundamental uh, design ideas behind Go, which is to make it more of a uh, you know, it, it feels like using a dynamic language, um, but with all of the uh, all the benefit you get with uh, with dynamic uh, with with compiled languages, um, it's obviously no co coincidence that um, that dynamic languages are adding types, for example. But if we look at the Go FAQ, they specifically call it out to say that working with Go is intended to be fast. It should take at most a few seconds to build a large executable on a single computer. Uh, and that's certainly been the case um, when I've been using it. You can t type a single command uh, to, to compile and run the code, uh, and it, it takes no more time than just running a, a simple Python script, for example. And then the final thing on this slide is around containerization. So it might seem odd to have containerization on performance, but actually, if you're building containers, either locally or part of your CI CD pipelines, and you're pushing and pulling those containers around everywhere, then the size of those containers might be might be quite important. So I did a couple of little tests, just a simple Hello World app, uh, where we used uh, the standard Python and Go um, uh, images, and you can see that they're very similar in size. And then when we compress those down to use uh, 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 Scratch for the uh, for the Go image, and we're using Alpine for the Python image, then there's a reasonable difference in the in the size there. And that's because with Python you need to have that Python runtime installed as well. So with Go, of course, you don't need that. And you could argue that you could make that Python image a little smaller, um, but that would be, be at the expense of simplicity and readability, and that's clearly never a, never a good thing. Um, so, uh, and the other thing with not having to have a lot of extra uh, uh, stuff inside your container is that it's likely to be more secure as well. So uh, there's obviously a lot of other areas we could talk about performance, uh, but I just wanted to move on to the final, final slide um, just as we come to the end of the, the presentation here, and that's around portability. So from a portability perspective, when you're using Go, because it's a compiled language, you end up with a statically compiled binary, which you can just send to somebody and they can run on their, uh, on their platform without uh, any other dependencies or anything like that. And this was really useful in, in a, a situation I had where we had an engineer on site, but he just needed a simple utility to run. Uh, and we started to write that in Python. But uh, we just checked with him to say, do you have Python installed? And he didn't. So rather than sort of forcing him down a route where he needed to install Python, uh, just in, in order to run a simple script, we wrote that in Go instead. And we just shipped in the Go executable. Uh, and he was able to run that on his machine. Now, the, the developers were using um, a, a Mac, for example, uh, but the engineer was using a PC. But that's fine, because we can also cross compile binaries between different platforms as well. Um, so that's uh, that's me really coming to the end of my time. So I just wanted to uh, say uh, thank you and just end with a, a slide on some resources really that you can use to, to perhaps get started with Go, uh, a link to the blog post there, and uh, a link to the DevNet Code Exchange and Terraform and some of the providers as well. Uh, and with that, I just want to say thank you very much for your time and, uh, and I hope you enjoy the rest of DevNet Create.